Welcome to your Blocker News. I'm bringing you worldwide hashtag Burn Banksy and local art news. Well, sneak peek with our upcoming art exhibition in Miraflores district. But let's first think outside the block. Worldwide art news. NFTs, for God's sake, they are everywhere. I mean, I could not say anything about them, but I mean, how not if art enthusiasts just burnt a Banksy print and decided to sell it as an NFT. Find the video here, just give me a second. And well, the burning process is just slow. $33,000 print was burned on March 3, just two days ago, by self-proclaimed tech and art enthusiasts who are selling the Banksy as an NFT, but not before they burned the original. The title of the print is Morons. What a coincidence. Done on 2006 and was purchased last December at Christie's, which brought a pest control certificate of authenticity. The promised video, here you go. I'm a member of a group of tech and art enthusiasts. Standing next to me right now is a 2006 Banksy piece entitled Morons that is certified authentic by Banksy's pest control. Right now, we are currently minting it with our partner Superfarm, an NFT platform for trading and minting NFTs. Tomorrow, the NFT will be sold on OpenSea. More information can be found on our Twitter, Burnt Banksy. Right now, I'm going to burn this Banksy. And the reason behind this is for the NFT, if we were to have the NFT and the physical piece, the value would be primarily in the physical piece. By removing the physical piece from existence and only having the NFT, we can ensure that the NFT, due to the smart contract ability of the blockchain, will ensure that no one can alter the piece and it is the true piece that exists in the world. By doing this, the value of the physical piece will then be moved onto the NFT, being the only way you can have this piece anymore. And the goal here is to inspire. We want to inspire technology enthusiasts and we want to inspire art, art, artists. We want to inspire artists and we want to explore a new medium for artistic expression. With that being said, I want to thank Superfarm, I want to thank Injective Protocol, I want to thank all of our supporters and all of our partners.
Drop your comment as I'm very interested. What do you think about this specific action from this so-called art enthusiasts? This time we don't have a special guest artist, but well, I wanted to share a sneak peek of our upcoming exhibition happening in Miraflores District, Lima, Peru. Yes. Well, it's coming also the virtual version of it. This has been prepared especially for Women's Month, but come on, you know me. I don't celebrate anything for a day, a month, because we're women every single day of our lives. And as a true femme power and Peruvian pride, well, I've curated Peruvian women of the 2021. So enjoy the sneak peek. Returning to worldwide art news, Dr. Fauci's 3D printed coronavirus model was given to Smithsonian. The educational aid will be part of a forthcoming exhibition at the National Museum of American History in Washington, DC. This donation was made during a live streamed ceremony on Tuesday when the institution awarded Fauci's its Great Americans Medal for his decades long career fighting infectious disease. The museum's curators are currently gathering objects related to the pandemic for the future exhibition. Interesting, don't you think so? The art tip of the week is trust yourself and don't let anything or anyone bring you down. If you're an artist, well, find what makes you different from the rest and make it your differential on a canvas, a sculpture, or whatever the medium you use. Well, guys, that's everything for this week's episode. I really hope that you enjoy it. And I'll see you next Friday with more about our exhibition. Remember, if you're looking for Latin American art, you're in the right place. Also, find us on RC platform or our website. Plus, follow me on Clubhouse every single Friday, 8 p.m. GMT minus 5 EST time. Well, I'm running this Art and Chill Rooms, so you're super welcome to join me. Well, share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes, and what else? Well, keep safe, be a skeptic, question absolutely everything, and think outside the block. Basically the workflow each day is I'll try and get some sort of concept in mind and then I kind of just sit down and do it. I don't really have time to like sketch a million things out and revise this idea. It's really got to just be like run and gun, got to get her done. I have a huge library of 3D models that I can bring into the scene very quickly to compose these images. It really feels like a kid who's got a big, big toy collection. With a few clicks, I can take and compose a scene. This shows what the kind of final picture will look like. On average, the pictures take about two hours. It really needs to fit into everyday life to be able to sustain something over a, a very long period of time like this.